presenter who is monitoring the chat box for questions. So as we go, um, participants are muted. Um, but go ahead and type any questions in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer those after the presenters have, have presented, but you know, type your questions at any point. You'll also have their contact information at the end. This webinar is being recorded, so we'll be able to share that out. And for participating, you'll also receive a certificate of attendance uh, if you want to capture that for contact hours. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mary Rowland, who is at InfoHio, uh, and she's an instructional team specialist there. And she's going to share many resources available there. Mary? Hey, thank you. Go ahead and get the slide up. OK. so. Um, just like to welcome to the new 2018-2019 school year. My name is Mary Rowland and I am an instructional team specialist with Info Ohio, Ohio's pre-K-12 digital library. I'm excited to share with you the tools and resources to support your students as they become uh, college and career ready. So Info Ohio transforms student learning by offering four major services. Um, one, licensing a collection of instructional content selected to support Ohio's learning standards at no cost to Ohio's schools. Two, we develop free web-based instructional tools to help students learn and grow. Three, Info Ohio provides cost-effective professional development to support Ohio's pre-K-12 educators. And four, we support an integrated library system for more than 2,200 Ohio schools that serve more than 1.1 million students nationwide. This past summer, Info Ohio introduced a new website. Oh, the slides are not showing. Uh, All right. Okay, how does that look? Okay, let's try this again. Um, so, so we inter so this past summer uh, we introduced a new website designed to make it easier to find for find what you need for both you and your students. With geolocation added to our site, users in Ohio are automatically logged in using a statewide username and password. If your device does not automatically authenticate, click in the top left corner and you'll find an option to look up your school's username and password. If you ever have any difficulty logging in, please contact support.infohio.org where our staff can assist you so that you can access our resources. And so we'll begin in the top right corner of your screen if you're logged into Info Ohio at www.infoohio.org. And from the menu, we'll click on resources. And after selecting resources from the Info Ohio main menu, scroll down until you find EBSCO multi-database search. Using a dis discipline specific database allows students to access a wealth of knowledge from professionals and researchers in the field. Students can then use this information to, to guide their decision making process as they explore and plan post secondary opportunities. Databases are organized alphabetically. So pair research skills with the topic of interest for your students. For example, if you have a student that's interested in pediatric nursing, use a discipline specific database like Health Source Nursing Academic Edition, which includes access to nearly 550 scholarly full text journals. For students interested in business careers, direct them to Regional Business News. This database provides access to regional business publications, including Crane's Cleveland Business. 
And next we'll take a look at iSearch. iSearch is Info Ohio's discovery layer tool. And this tool searches across nearly all of Info Ohio's resources and pulls them into one list for student, students to manage. As an educational tool, iSearch supports inquiry and project-based learning. Use iSearch to teach students how to use limiters. Begin by typing search terms in the search box. And as you can see here, I have my search terms pediatric nurse. And then at the left of the screen, you'll see the menu of limiters that students can work with. And because I want to encourage my students to use academic journals, I will select the advanced resources tab here at the top. And here's an example of a search. So as you can see at the top of the screen, I selected the advanced sources tab. At the left of the screen, you can see the limiters I implemented. And because we wanna teach students how to use limiters within a discovery layer tool, I narrowed my research results by date. You, by date, only the last 10 years. By publication type, academic journals only. And by geographic region, the United States. So now the student has a set of and so now the student has a set of 76 results that are timely and contain quality content to help them plan for their future careers. And the ability to navigate and utilize the results of an academic database search builds the research skills necessary that a student will need for success in the college and the workplace. And by using iSearch, they can learn more about a career that they're interested in and plan for um, after graduation. So to close out that search, just click the tab, tab and we'll go back to the main website. One more, web, one more resource I'd like to show you today. After you return to the web, main website, select resources. And here you'll find, and then from resources, select featured items. And here you'll find three featured items, resources for beginning readers, college and career readiness and summer learning. And we'll take a look at college and career readiness. So in college and career readiness, you'll find lots of tools and resources to support research skills, career exploration, and college credit plus. Um, today, we're gonna take a look at ready for work, ready for success, ready for college. So on the left, your students will find links to free test preparation resources. At the tab above is a link for school counselors, teachers, and administrators. And here you'll find links to the Ohio Department of Education's website. And each link provides current information about graduation requirements and College Credit Plus and more. And as you scroll further down, you'll see links for Ohio Means Jobs, additional resources for test preparation, and a link to the Ohio Department of Education Career Pathways, where students can find more information to help them plan for successful careers after graduation. There's also a link here for um, students entering the workforce on industry-recognized credentials. The last resource I'd like to show you today is our educator tools. Info Ohio is adding thousands of standards aligned educational online resources curated by Novation. Novation curates open educational resources through their 127 point rubric with the help of teachers and librarians. So you can search for lesson plans, um, instructional content and more by subject, grade level and format. And here on the screen, you can see a sample search. And under instructional trends, I selected college and career. And then under the grade band level, I selected nine and 10. And you can see that up here at the top. And so now I have a list of instructional strategies, lesson plans, and resources that I can use with my students to help them plan for college and career ready opportunities. To research, reset your search, just simply click on the red arrow and that will take you back to the main screen. And if you ever have um, any questions or need help using these resources, there's a help button at the lower right hand corner. Okay. So stay informed and stay in the know. Subscribe to our listserv, follow us on social media and sign up for our newsletter. You'll be the first to know right away what's new and improved from Info Ohio. And again, if you ever have any uh, difficulty accessing our resources, please contact us at support.infoohio.org.
Thank you so much for your dedication to our students as they become college and career ready. Thank you, Mary. Um, we're going to hear now from Eric Seiler at WVIZ PBS Idea Stream. So we'll turn it over to you, Eric. All right, well, thank you very much and um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all for uh, joining uh, with us today. Um, I'm uh, with the Public Broadcasting Station in Cleveland, Ohio, um, WVIZ PBS Idea Stream. And um, besides um, airing uh, lots of um, educational programs, we do have an education department in which we provide um, support and services to schools throughout our area. And, um, and what I want to talk to you about today is what we do in regards to distance learning. We offer a lot of programming, um, mostly in the areas of career programs. So I'm just gonna pull up my um, brief PowerPoint here and share that with you for a moment. Let's see if that shares here. There we go, and start PowerPoint from here. With that, play from PowerPoint. There we go. Oh, there I am. That's my name. Okay, so um, moving on. This is just an overview of our brochure here. Um, our distance learning portion for IdeaStream is actually part of NOTA. NOTA stands for North Ohio Technology Association. And what we do is we really try to enhance um, the educational experiences for students through our programming. And we do a variety of things. Here we do virtual- I turn off my Eric, Eric. my Jordan. I'm, I'm sorry? Okay, um, here we do um, virtual field trips. We do um, career exploration series. We have town hall hall speakers. We do um, careers that are performing arts. We have conversations with authors. Um, we've done high school courses and we also have done college credit plus courses as well too. I'm just gonna focus on a couple of these areas here and more specific, mainly our career exploration series and also our careers in the performing arts series as well too. This is just a, a little bit of an overview I'm giving you and I'll go into a specific example in a moment. Um, one, another thing that we can do is besides um, just um, uh, working with the schools and um, the, your high school students and so forth, we're also open to working with um, Board of Education, um, PTOs, or slash PTAs at different schools. And, um, you know, and um, we, we have a really strong connection to the community. That's part of our mission as well, not just to work with schools, but work with the community as well, too. And uh, one thing I did stream is, this is just taken from our brochure. We are like the founding members of the Ohio DLA Association. and. Uh, we also are part of the um, CILC, which is the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, where you can find a great deal of um, other programming as well, too. Um, some things that um, you get from being part of um, our organization, uh, uh, NOTA, is um, you get unlimited student content. We can coordinate high school courses for um, your students. And um, we can do workshops for um, professional development for your schools. And we also provide support in terms of equipment as well, too. And if you're more interested in becoming a member of our organization, uh, you can contact me directly. I'll leave you my contact information at the end. But if not, you can take advantage of some of the things that we have to offer as well, too. And one thing I want to focus on is what we do is um, careers in the performing arts. Careers in the performing arts is a series of um, uh, programs in which we bring in professionals from Broadway. Um, if you haven't been to Cleveland, um, we are put to our station in Cleveland. We're actually located in the Playhouse Square area. Uh, we're in the theater district. And when major Broadway shows come to town, we have formed a partnership with Playhouse Square to have access to cast and crew members from those actual shows um, that come to town. And here's a flyer here, for example, of Les Mis. Les Mis is um, coming to town soon. And on November 8th, we're gonna do a career program with cast and crew members from Les Mis and they will be in our studios and you can actually join and learn and ask questions to cast and crew members from the show. Most recently, um, this kicks off our, our new uh, school year. We ended our school year with the cast and crew, uh, with cast and crew members from Aladdin. We had the um, genie on from Aladdin, we had Jafar, we had 
um, the wardrobe supervisor and, um, and so forth for that show. It's a really, really successful show. And if you are in the Cleveland area, you can bring your students to our studios to actually be a part of the audience, or you can just more conveniently uh, join us from your school, which is considered like a virtual field trip as well. Until another thing we do is a career exploration series. In our career exploration series, we look at many different careers um, from um, financing to banking to IT to healthcare and so forth. And here's an example of one of our programs that we do here. Uh, one thing we did was a, a career program in automotive technology. And this is what happens in the program. I go through a little PowerPoint in the beginning and I talk about what's required for, as you can see here, um, you must have a high school, um, uh, graduate from high school and you know, be a good candidate to interview for it as well. Uh, um, uh, we can look for someone who has uh, applied uh, a degree in uh, automotive technology and we go through the order of requirements. We show a little bit of a video of that particular career as well too. And we talk about how you can prepare to have a, a entry level position into this particular field. This is the format we follow for each program. Again, this is just a sample of a career auto, uh, in automotive technology as well too. We talk about some of the degree of study and so forth that's required as well. And we talk about what students can actually learn um, uh, when they're actually on the job as well too, and how they can actually be an apprentice in some type of a program as well. So this is the format we follow once we explain that to the students. Um, we allow you to have the opportunity to ask questions. And this also, what I find most beneficial about this is that it gives you the opportunity to actually, um, the opportunity to actually talk to professionals and to find out what you may be interested in or what you may not be interested in type of career you will pursue. So our website is um, ideastream.org slash distance, ideastream.org slash distance. So if you just Google distance learning and ideastream, you will come up on us as well too. Um, and one final program that I just want to talk about, we do special programs from um, every once in a while is, um, for instance, we may do a Veterans Day program or we may do um, uh, a Black History program. This year, we're not doing a Veterans Day program. Instead, we just did a program. In fact, I just um, um, finished it uh, not too long ago on Ohio's next governor. This is a um, inter live and interactive program. Uh, usually, it's um, done through um, most of my programming. It's done either through um, some type of um, video conferencing through um, Polycom or uh, Real Presence or Zoom. And we do stream programs sometime every once in a while on our website as well, too. And usually when we do those special programs, there's no cost involved. And if I can just show you real quick, what we did today was we were talking jobs with Ohio's next candidate. And what we had in our studio was we had um, um, Richard Cordray and Mike DeWine, uh, the two candidates for governor. And they were here and they participated in a forum, a live forum, and when students were in the audience and students were at their school viewing the stream online, this is the website for it here. And students actually have the opportunity to type in their questions. Usually with our video conferencing program, you can ask live questions. But since this is stream on our site, we had literally thousands of, of, of students participating. There was no way we can do a connection like that. I know BMC would not like me if we had a, a connection, which we had thousands of um, sites connected in that sense. But in this way, we were able to interact with them. Um, with um, uh, our students do at, by asking questions and students uh, filled out the um, uh, information here and they asked questions to Mike DeWine and Richard Cordray um, uh, this afternoon. So this is just an example of some of our special programming that we do. So um, again, um, my name is Eric Seiler. If you have um, any questions, feel free to reach out um, to me or on our website. And I'm gonna end here and just toss things over to um, Tom Miller, I believe next and he will, um, Take from there. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Uh, hi, I'm Tom Miller. Uh, I'm with the Cleveland Clinic Civic Education Department, uh, and we have a variety of programs I'd like you to kind of run through today. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you some information and also get you a little bit involved. And uh, so, uh, two programs actually, uh, the programs we're going to talk about today um, are for predominantly high school, and then there's a few that actually dip into middle school. I know some of the schools that joining may have uh, 
grades eight through 12 uh, or seven through 12 even. So we wanted to just touch base on our middle school programs as well. Uh, and uh, Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic Civic Education Department's been here uh, since 2005, serving K-12 education uh, in Northeast Ohio, but actually across pretty much the country. Uh, and we've even can claim the world. We've had programs, uh, people join our programs from other countries. Uh, so we're real excited to be able to share with you today the programming that we do. Uh, and also uh, to kind of give you an understanding that uh, we reach out to a lot of different schools uh, and our focus is always going to be on being as engaging and uh, interactive as possible. So what I'd like to do before we begin, just to give you a sense of what it would be like to join a worldwide classroom, uh, which is one of the programs we're going to talk about today, I'd like you to uh, join me and, and go on to a, a website. You can either use your smartphone or your computer and type in www.menti.com. 541142. You can do this, and I actually just posted a link also in your uh, chat window. So if you want to just click on that and go right from your computer, uh, we start all our worldwide classrooms, uh, which is an engagement with uh, healthcare professionals, with polls, uh, online polls that the students can text in uh, their answers. This is a way for them to start understanding a little bit about, uh, for us to understand what the students know, but also then for them to be engaged with the, the caregiver, the healthcare professional uh, as part of our connected learning programs. So as you can see, uh, and thank you everybody for, for typing in different uh, uh, careers in healthcare. One of the reasons I asked this question is because we here at the Cleveland Clinic are always promoting both careers that are clinical and non-clinical. Uh, so our programming will highlight surgeons and physicians and physical therapists, but we also highlight health IT and we highlight and somebody put STNA, so entry level positions in nursing that you can actually come out of high school, take a certificate program, uh, take a test, and then you're going to be able to work and it's a, a, a position that is an entry level position here at the clinic. So uh, thank you for the, the responses. Uh, and we have the students do a variety of different uh, activities using their, their smartphones. Uh, this is just one of them. Again, we always do a pre and a post. And the nice thing also is, is that students aren't allowed to use their cell phones. And we know that that's a choice that schools make. Um, the, the teachers can actually log in, pull the students in their classroom, and then enter the results so that the students are still feeling like they're participating, even though they're not on an individual phone. So the Worldwide Classroom uh, is run 18 times during the school year. We do it on Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock, twice a month. Uh, the schedule varies based on holidays and school schedules and everything else. Uh, but this is a program that is free. Uh, there's a simple registration process, and then you're sent the invitations to join any or all of the programming. Uh, we focus on a variety of different healthcare professions. We also have a whole uh, set of topics that we deal with as well, nutrition, obesity, uh, the opioid crisis. Uh, so we, we try to, to vary it between health topics and health careers. And I'm just going to kind of give you an overview that we do have um, some really amazing, uh, engaging presenters, uh, and the students can interact with them. They can ask them questions during the session. They can text in questions if they're using our online poll tool. Uh, and also our presenters do activities with the students, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, I always like and know right away how well Dr. Modlin, he's our kidney surgeon, uh, he's a world-renowned kidney surgeon, and he narrates uh, a, a surgery with the students. And you can tell right away if the students are into it because you can just see them uh, engrossed in what he's showing, which is, is a uh, real surgery. Uh, but you also see the students that kind of look away or put their head down for a little while to try to kind of adjust to the fact that they're seeing inside the body, they're seeing a kidney removed, they're seeing stitching, there's a lot of blood, all those things, uh, but it is a, a very uh, impactful uh, session. And we always say with our worldwide classroom that we want to either gross the kids out, we want to make them laugh, we want to make them cry. We're gonna have our caregivers tell stories because they do, uh, students resonate to that. And so we're always uh, having our caregivers, the presenters, explain how their job uh, impacts the people that they work with. But then they also share their career path, 
uh, how they got to where they are, and they talk a lot about the team. Uh, so I'll go back to Dr. Modlin. Um, when he talks about the kidney surgery, he tells them about the 20 so different people that support that surgery. Uh, and it's a variety of people, everything from environmental services that is cleaning the, the OR to make sure that, that it is uh, spotless and he can do his work, all the way through the different types of supports, the anesthetists, the, the, the nurses, uh, the, the different kinds of people that are, are supporting the technology uh, that he's using, and they are using more technology. So you get a good sense, your students will really understand what's going on uh, in, and see the whole career and the whole team that's in support. Um, also, they, just as a down in the, the bottom corner there, uh, this is uh, Crystal Eckstein. She's a pharmacist. She does a variety of programs. You'll see her in some other pictures as well. Um, but one of the things I want to point out is that uh, when you're joining Worldwide Classroom, we use WebEx, which is similar to Zoom, just like what you did today. Um, we have a variety of schools and a variety of, of configurations. So we have schools that join us where all the students are in an auditorium looking at a, a giant screen, uh, 100 kids in the auditorium. We'll have schools where all the, the, the guidance counselor actually goes around and uh, spotlights students that are really interested in different healthcare areas, and they may just uh, gather around a laptop. And it's a very intimate one-on-one, -on -one, maybe one-on-two students uh, viewing the session. Uh, you can even join Worldwide Classroom from a cell phone. So if you really have uh, a need and you have one student that really wants to join and you can't figure out all the technology, there's an app for that. So we, we encourage that everybody that joins, participates in the polls, can also ask questions, and hopefully they do all the activities. And here's a, an example of one of the activities that we did. Uh, we had a panel of nurse practitioners, uh, and they were explaining their different roles. And one of them was an, a midwife, one of them was an anesthetist, and two of them were nurse practitioners. So they came up with an idea to do something called MedLib, which was like based on Mad Libs. And the students texted uh, uh, words, and then they acted out a uh, script, which demonstrated all their different roles and all the experiences they had. And Damon, who was, uh, is a nurse practitioner, uh, he was quite the sport to be the, um, the, the woman having the baby uh, and even had a, a plastic bag underneath his uh, uh, scrubs there to pull out different stuffed animals and the students had named them all. It was wonderful. Uh, and the feedback that we received from that uh, presentation was, was really great that a lot of the students thanked them uh, for making it interesting, but also making it fun. So we do work on trying to be interactive and using the tools, trying to bridge this distance. This distance is really hard uh, from the caregiver to the classroom. So uh, we're really always working on that. Um, and if you're interested, you want to pop in, we have a worldwide classroom set up for this Tuesday. Uh, it's meet an occupational therapist, and it's actually going to be a panel. Uh, there's going to be an, uh, ner an occupational therapist, a physical therapist, a recreation therapist, a speech therapist, and an, uh, an assistant PT uh, physical therapist. Uh, and they're actually, we're going to be on site at their facility. Um, it's a therapy center, and they'll be in the room where they do uh, pediatric uh, therapy, for, and they're going to talk to talk about their patients uh, and the challenges they have. And one of the activities, just to kind of connect you into what we do, um, they're going to ask this question for your students to do, and I'm asking you to do this as well. Take a pen and a piece of paper, and uh, what you do is, I'm a left-handed, so I'm going to switch to right hand, and what we'd like you to do just for the next 30 seconds is, see if you can write, I am writing this with my non-dominant hand, with your non-dominant hand, uh, and it is a absolute challenge. I uh, dare you to try it in cursive. That's even harder. Um, you have to be very patient and all of a sudden you start to realize you probably don't have the same control with your uh, non-dominant hand that you do with your others. So if you students are doing this, uh, we're going to demonstrate and explain to them then that a uh, physical therapist, occupational therapist would experience and have students or kids that are coming to them that may have uh, motor skill issues. Uh, they may have uh, a, a, an issue uh, like cerebral palsy where they're actually um, not able to make the kind of control and fine motor skills that, that most people are normally uh, able to do. They may be dealing with, uh, with kids who have had a stroke 
uh, and our relearning uh, skills, or maybe uh, had had challenges uh, in uh, when they were born that they're still trying to uh, get into and, and be able to be able to function in in a normal manner. So that's the kind of activities that we do. We try to bring it in. We're not asking a teacher to do a lot of prep. If your students have a piece of paper and a pen, generally you're in good shape. We do get students up. We do a whole thing on wellness, and we have them do a variety of activities and exercises. Uh, so again, trying to bridge this gap, make it con uh, connective to the students uh, in a way that, that is following good instruction as well. Um, our overall uh, schedule for Worldwide Classroom this year, uh, we've already started it. We've had a physician assistant. We did a, a session on pain in the opioid crisis last week. Uh, so now we're into um, the October and on. Uh, we vary again between meet the caregivers and hot topics. In both cases, they're meeting caregivers, they're meeting professionals. Uh, so uh, cochlear implants, they'll be meeting audiologists. Uh, when they, they go to, uh, another example, culinary medicine, we actually work out of a teaching kitchen and the students are, are taught a couple different ways to reduce fat, sodium, and sugar in their diet by using some other substitutions. Uh, and then we have a whole slew of, of uh, caregivers coming up. Everything from Dr. Modlin, again, he's a, a very popular a heart surgeon, is gonna take them through uh, the basics of a heart surgery. Uh, and like I said, we also highlight non-clinical uh, positions, uh, which will have a health, health IT engineer. Last year, we had a person talking about all the tools that we use uh, diagnostically to do express care, which is a online, um, uh, position visit. So a lot of exciting things that we do. And uh, we also have a program, if you have middle school students, this is for grades six through eight. Uh, it's called Adventures in Health Science and Medicine. Uh, the students get a kit. It's an eight-week uh, exploration. They get a, There's a case study. They meet a different caregiver each week. They start out in med lab, then they meet a radiologist, then they meet a uh, respiratory therapist and wrap up with a physical therapist. They're diagnosing a student's issue uh, and the whole program culminates with an innovation to a real world problem, which the students then uh, judge each other's uh, uh, submissions. So it's an exciting program. Again, I know you're mostly a high school audience, but I did want to point that out. Registration opens October 16th. Uh, and the program runs from January to March on Wednesday mornings at nine o'clock. Uh, space is limited. So if you know a, a, a middle or a high school, or I'm sorry, a middle school teacher, or you've got a middle school teach program in your school, you'd love to have you join this. And also this is one of the programs that was awarded the uh, U.S. Distance Learning Association's Innovation Award last year. So I'll throw that plug in there because we're really proud of that. So um, again, Worldwide Classroom is a open enrollment, free, easy to join. The website's there, ccf.org, WW Classroom. Uh, if you have questions, you're more than welcome to email me. I'm so happy to, to be able to, to have your schools join us and uh, hopefully the students can, can learn more about health careers and, and medicine. And now I'm gonna uh, hand it off over to uh, Jordan. Uh, no wait, Lee, am I going to Lee? Yeah, Lee, so thank you very much. And handing Thank it up. you, Tom. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start talking to myself for just a moment until I see somebody send me a chat that says, yes, we can hear you, Lee, because I'll be the first to admit I am used to the face. Hey, I saw a big yes. Thank you, Zoom, for saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'll get my face on the screen. Hello. Welcome to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And I'm standing in a room full of random things. Because I enjoy a good joke once I figure out the good joke, and teachers, you know that humor in the classroom is excellent, Tom set me up yet again for another excellent moment of silliness. Tom, I tried writing this with my non-dominant hand, and it didn't work very well. Let me, let me see what the problem was. Hold on a second. Oh, that's the problem. I thought I got rid of this non-dominant hand weeks ago. Sorry, that just didn't work very well. Bye. Okay, so here's what we're doing, is we're talking about high schoolers right how now those of you who are out there watching just, just you have a frame of reference here my name's lee i work here at the cleveland museum of natural history as you can see on the wall back there and we do k to 12. that's a big stretch k to 12 and lots of excellent content providers out there do that and you have to wrap your brain around the different attitudes and i have a hard time bringing it back from goofy kindergarten mode 
to impress me with this stuff, high schooler mode. Therefore, what I'm going to show you is how we connect your high schoolers, not necessarily to goofballs like myself, but to all of the professionals that work within a museum setting. Allow me to show you one of the professionals right now. The guy way down the bottom left corner is David Chapman, and he's our casting lab technician. He's got a couple of fellows that help him out and a couple of ladies, too, and their job is to create things that you see him standing next to, a long-necked dinosaur, a sauropod called a haplocanthosaurus. And this is a still shot from a live stream where I was hanging around with the camera. You can see the chats. I know they're really small along the right-hand edge there. And the kids that were watching were high school students interrogating David about his job. And what he was pointing out was he's an artist who works with the paleontology crew. They go out into the field and dig up the cool dinosaur fossils, bring them back to the museum, and then they say, oh, this other museum would like a copy of this. We would like to share it, but we don't want to send them the original actual fossil that we dug out of the ground. Therefore, he takes it, makes this really cool plastic plaster, whatever the material he's working in, copy, and that's what they share with the other museum. That is how I can brandish this awesome adult male gorilla skull at a bunch of preschoolers when we're talking about their teeth and then say, isn't that a neat job that somebody here took the real gorilla skull and then made this really perfect copy so I could play with it and not worry about dropping it. Ta-da, but it looks exactly the same as the real one. I think that is amazing stuff. And it also answers the question that everybody asks when they walk into a museum is, is that real? What am I looking at here? Is this a copy or is that the real object? And sometimes it's an amazing combination of them. If you take a look at that sauropod next to David, all those bones look pretty much the same, but the skull is completely artificial because no one has ever found a haplocanthosaurus skull. I don't know why. You'll have to ask the haplocanthosauruses. Maybe their head is more delicious than the rest of them and it got eaten. I don't know. But when somebody finds one someday, they'll replace it. But for now, the artist has to make their best guess, helped with the paleontologist. Not just dinosaurs, though. Everybody always thinks that's the only thing you got going on at a museum. Here's an example of my buddy Lee Hall. I know what you're thinking. You're like, wait, do they only hire people that are named Lee at this museum? Yes, that is exactly what we do. And Lee Hall is standing in our vertebrate zoology lab looking at a whole bunch of jars of various amphibians. And he's talking about how those various amphibians are stored in those jars to preserve this marvelous collection. The term was um, a collections at a museum are a library of species. That's a really neat phrase. And what it's explaining is why does a museum have a need to go out into the field and collect all these animals and then preserve them in, say, alcohol or formaldehyde and the various chemicals they're using so you can go backwards in time and look at these animals, how they were when they were collected, and maybe 50 years in the future there's a virus or something affecting the, uh, the area and killing off those animals. You can compare the original ones to the ones now and get a better idea of how to conserve that species. When you are talking to experts about this, however, note Lee Hall's face on the left and my buddy Tim's face on the right. Tim is the curator of vertebrate zoology, but he is rather dry when he is speaking. Therefore, actors are necessary at museums too, because if you are not exciting as a teacher, no amazing technology is going to help you get those students' attention. You got to like what you're doing, right? And all good teachers know you got to be a little tiny bit goofy. So Lee Hall was a good example of that, trying to cut it up a little bit in vertebrate zoo. But if you want to take it out in the field, we can do that too, because we'll go live stream with our team while they're collecting specimens. And the lady with the red hair is Roberta. Her job is to go out and catch the frogs. The guy with the camera is a cameraman. The guy behind him trying to look busy is John, and John is our blog guy. He's our science writer. So in this picture, you see guy in the gray shirt trying to look like he's in charge, right? I'm the director. Roberta is emoting down there about the perils of the frogs. And what is Matt doing? Guy in the blue shirt? Is he texting his friends? What's he doing? Checking his email? Nope, he's tweeting and he is sending out all kinds of social media about what he's doing right now. Look at that, three jobs in one picture. Of course, I'm hiding in the back doing nothing but ooh, taking a picture of them. But then I bring it back and I show it to the kids and I say, isn't that neat? If you like catching frogs in a pond, that's a job. If you like directing people who are in the pond catching the frogs, that's a job, and then you go write about it. Or if you like tweeting and stuff, social media manager, that's a position too. It's kind of nuts. They don't think about that stuff when they're getting our programs. Sometimes we also go out and bother animals. Now, the animals really don't care that we're there because they just want the food. Here's an example of my friend Katie. Wait, let me turn the sound off on this because otherwise I'll be talking over Katie. There we go. And this is a sample of the tour. She's narrating. I just have the sound off. And yes, she's petting a porcupine. What? You can pet a porcupine? <laughs> you actually can. There's hair sticking up over their quills. And during this live stream, we were connected to 18 different classrooms of kids who were all 
sending their chat questions into us about porcupines. How fun is that? So you could talk to a real wildlife specialist while they're feeding the animal or taking care of the animal and learn all about that. But still, the job of being the camera person is in there, too. So that's how we highlight lots of different careers within a museum is, yes, we're teaching the programs sometimes within this room. Sometimes we're sending you kits of materials. Sometimes we're linking it to worksheets that the kids are working on that you can download as well. All that stuff's on our website. They got links all over the place. Thank you for all the crew that worked on this uh, career presentation today because all of those links are available. One thing I want to impress upon you is we don't forget that there are those pesky standards. I know. You're like, she had to go there. Yeah, I mentioned those academic testing standards. Yep. And what we do is we work with the faculty to say, all right, guys, here's what the kids have to do. You have to hand them a worksheet, say, for example, like this. And they have to figure out, OK, do I know what DNA fingerprinting is? Talking about genetics for high schoolers here. Or if you take it to the next painful level, oh, man, now we got to talk about not only taking this DNA fingerprinting activity and getting DNA gel electrophoresis happening, but then taking all of that data and making a cladogram, phylogenic trees. How do you possibly make this fun? I have no idea. It's super scary. Oh, I could color code the answer key, but no, only the teachers get to see that. No fun for the kids, right? But instead what you do is say, hey kids, all of that cladogram you just created is about this creature. And this creature was collected by our invertebrate zoology guy, Gavin, when he went to South America and collected praying mantises. And then Gavin wanted to learn about their brain activity, so he had a guy who was a uh, robot technician build this crazy little backpack to stick on the praying mantis so he could stick a wire in its brain and analyze its brain activity. What? And then, when the praying mantis died because they don't live that long, we had our casting lab guy stick it in this clear acrylic. How about that for a whole bunch of weirdo jobs? I love it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how it works, is you link what you're teaching to all kinds of other things going on in the background that made that program possible. This is a still shot from our website. It'll say Built to Survive, because that's the traveling exhibit that's here right now. But if you click on that magic word, learn, it will drop down a whole list of all the different programs we teach. You're looking for intera um, interactive video conferencing. That's what I'm doing with you right now. VFT for virtual field trip. That's the live streaming, going out and bothering frogs in the field. Thank you so much for your time. If you guys have any questions, I'm now going to refer to my tiny little phone screen so I can see your pictures. And we have a special guest star to hand off to Jordan at COSI. Special guest star. Hi, Jordan at COSI. <laughs> Turning it over to you. He knows what we're talking about. Bye. Hello, Erica, uh, former COSI employee. Very nice to see you today. My name is Jordan Rader, and I am the manager of interactive video conferencing here at uh, COSI in Columbus, Ohio. And I wanted to uh, talk about some of the programs that we offer today. Um, very much like what you saw from uh, Cleveland there, we offer two-way interactive programs. Um, where you, your students get to talk to either a COSI team member or an expert scientist doctor um, here in our studio or actually maybe even on location. And they get to interact with those people about um, the topic. Most of our programs or many of our programs also include kits of materials that we actually send out to your school with supplies to do pre and post visit activities that you get to keep as part of your program. Um, one of the programs that I wanted to highlight today is a program called In-Depth Autopsy. And it is a program where your students are going to watch a uh, recording of an autopsy performed at the Ohio State University uh, Wexner Medical Center. And they get to uh, interact with a pathologist who will narrate the program live for them. So I am going to show some of the autopsy footage. So if you are squeamish, you might want to look away. But I think it's very interesting. I just wanted to point out some of the cool aspects of this program. So here we can see some footage of a portion of the autopsy called lung insufflation. And what they're doing is actually putting formalin, which is a type of formaldehyde, into the lung. And they fill it up, and then they clamp it off, and they allow it to sit uh, for a while, and it will actually become firm. And that allows them to then make um, cut this uh, segment, or cut this specimen into different segments so that they can better analyze it. So it's kind of a really cool um, program where your students get to see lots of different body structures. So they get to see different organ systems, uh, how these uh, organs relate inside the body, and um, then get to see them removed, taken out, and kind of 
um, segmented into pieces just so they can see their inside um, kind of structures. One thing that I think is particularly interesting about this program is that we do not share the final cause of death with the students, we leave that up for them to decide. They have to take the information that they uh, gather during the program. We encourage them to take notes. We provide them things like lung um, like measurements and weights. They're given reference measurements. And they say, OK, is this heavy? Is this um, too light? Is it too big? Is it too small? They have to collect all that data during the program and then research afterwards and see if they can figure up with the final cause of death. So that is our in-depth autopsy program. Uh, another program that I wanted to mention briefly is our You Become the Pharmacist program. And this is also a, a program where students get to interact with a medical professional. They will speak with a, um, actually a college student who is majoring in um, pharmacy at, from the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. And during that program, they will get to experience some of the different roles uh, and skills that a pharmacist needs to learn. Um, so they will start by interacting um, with a patient, a pretend patient who is maybe misusing or abusing their medication. And they have to figure out how are they going to, um, how are they going to counsel that patient? Are they going to fill this prescription? It's really going to be up to them. And what we then find is that actually, yes, this patient uh, was misusing their medication and has actually now um, gone into um, a code blue and is going to have to um, have to be treated for this. And we segue into this um, simulation of an ER code blue. And the students will get to um, kind of view and hear this procedure uh, and also get to hear the um, kind of commentary by our pharmacist. Here you can see uh, the doctor is giving her um, explanation of what is happening behind her and the med and medica medications that she is administering during a procedure like this. Um, so that is called You Become the Pharmacist. And uh, the final program that I wanted to touch on today is maybe our most popular program. It's been around the longest. It's called Surgical Suite Total Knee Replacement. And in this program, uh, you will be connected live to Mount Carmel East Hospital here in Columbus, Ohio for an actual uh, total knee replacement. And your students will get to watch the actual procedure, but also talk to the surgeon and um, the medical team as they perform the actual procedure. So um, I'm going to give a little close up here of some of the things that they might see during the procedure. So this is called a, a bovi, and a bovi is the device that they use to cut the tissue. So it's not actually a blade. It is um, a device that creates a current of electricity. And so as they cut through the tissue, it will cauterize uh, the tissue so that it doesn't bleed. And you can, the students will be able to see the doctor go through the skin and then through the muscle um, and finally get down to the bone. Now, I don't have a real bone, but I do have some fake plastic bone here. And one of the things that I think is really interesting about this program is when the doctor points out arthritis. You know, your students may um, you know, hear that their grandparent has arthritis and they think that it is something that, the, that they're gaining um, as this disease, but it's actually a removal. So arthritis is the removal of cartilage from the joint. And here you can see it's um, highlighted in red there very dramatically. But during the program, what the doctor does to um, emphasize this point is actually uses a metal tool to tap on the bone. And if you tap on the raw bone, it will make a very kind of tinny metallic sound. If you tap on the cartilage, the healthy part, it will make a dull thud. And so you, your students will be able to hear that uh, the difference between those two sounds, between healthy bone and arthritic bone uh, during the program, which I think is just kind of a really interesting way to emphasize that point. They'll also get to see um, the actual implants that go into the patient. Here I have some models here, but they can see how these actually work, how the joint will fit together. Um, so this one would go into the tibia, this one goes into the femur, and you can see how they can just kind of glide right on top of each other um, to provide that smooth motion of the knee joint. And again, that program is happening live right in front of their eyes. The students can uh, ask questions to the, um, to the surgeon but there's also other medical professionals in the room. So 
there are surgical techs and uh, nurses, anesthesiologists, um, even sales representatives. The people who provide these uh, instruments and these implants are in the room to answer questions to the doctors if they have any uh, questions about the instruments or materials that they're using. And those people are also in the room uh, for your students to interact with. So um, that kind of goes for all of our programs. We all, uh, every program we offer highlights not only the, you know, the, the main person always is the doctor, maybe the pathologist or the pharmacist, but each one of our programs um, will allow the students to see that there's kind of a bigger field beyond just the, the, the key player, the, the main person. Each one emphasizes um, all of the roles that allow these different procedures to occur. So I know I focused a lot on our medical uh, programs, which we do offer a lot, but we also have programs in other areas. So um, plant sciences, uh, engineering, um, astronomy, just to name a few. So if you have interest, um, you can look at our website and I'm gonna pull up my contact information here before I sign off. So again, my name is uh, Jordan Rader and I'm the manager of Inter interactive video conferencing here at COSI. You can email us if you have any questions at videoconferencing at COSI.org. You can visit our website at www.cosi.org slash IVC to learn more about our programs uh, or to reserve. So I think we are about out of time. So I'm gonna turn the program back over to Tisha. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan, and thank you all for such great information and resources. Um, we do have just a couple minutes, so I'm gonna see Kathy. Uh, do you have any questions that we can share with the panelists? Tisha, I think the first question may be for you. Um, <laughs> Julian's asking, what are the requirements you need to teach career education courses? Ah, I can absolutely share that information with you. Um, the best place to go is education.ohio.gov. And on that webpage, go ahead and just search. So the Department of Education's webpage, search in the top um, uh, search box for career technical education. Um, I can also send you some information, some details, um, depending on what grade level you're looking at and so forth. Um, depends on, on what you're looking at. Uh, if you just want to add career education to your classroom, there is no additional certification credential, anything that you need. Um, and we invite and welcome every educator to connect your classroom content to the future, to the, the world around our students so they can understand the context of what they're learning. Um, but yeah, I can, if you, um, post your email address, I can follow up with you on any specifics that you have. Thank you, Tisha. The next question is for Eric at NOTA ID Stream. Are these programs mobile or do you have to travel to Cleveland? Um, no, the, um, <clears throat> the programs are mobile and um, are, are, you do not have to travel to Cleveland at all. You can um, join us um, via your um, video, con video conferencing unit. Uh, or through Zoom, and um, we can connect you to the programs. Great. There's a lot of conversation and requests for links for additional information in the chat. Um, the information about our presentations today, as well as for the elementary and middle school, are available at our uh, Ohio Distance Learning website at ohiodla.org slash career connection programs. We will put this information on the certificate of attendance that you should receive from us probably tonight or tomorrow, as well as some, I'll just gather the other links that are in this web, in the chat as well, so you have that information. Lauren, were there any other questions that were asked before I got on the session today? There was a, a clarifying question about how to find resources on the Info Ohio website. Uh, Jennifer could cover that. I think that would be helpful. Sorry, it was Tisha taking This is Jennifer. Can you hear me? Yes, Jennifer, we can okay. hear you. Great. So the um, Info Ohio website is www.infoohio.org and there are a couple of different ways you can find the tools and resources for students. One, there are some buttons on the Info Ohio website 
that are grade band buttons and you can click on those grade band buttons and find the resources. The, the other way is there's a little menu. It has three lines. I call it a hamburger menu. You click on that little hamburger menu and then you can just pull down to the word resources and all of the resources are presented to you there. I'm hoping that that does it for you. Thank you, Jennifer. Kathy, I believe that was all the questions that were unanswered from the chat. Yes, very good. Thank you. Well, thank you all for a great afternoon. Again, I want to thank the panelists for sharing their resources and Ohio Distance Learning Association for coordinating and putting this all together. And we look forward to sharing resources with you through the Career Connections uh, resources here at the state, as well as I'm sure through Ohio DLA. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye.